three things real quickly how to how to approach these next the revival next week but first of all I want to read to you here out of Mark and kind of set up those three things this is the verse that God gave me for these nights in Mark 1 32 through 34 it said at evening when the sun had set they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed and the whole city was gathered together at the door look then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. The Bible said they brought to him all who were sick and demon possessed at evening, at sundown. So while we're, we're kind of theming this Awakening Nights revival conference, and here's what I believe. Aren't you glad that Jesus came and said, look, it's, it's not the well who need a doctor, but the sick. And I believe all of us have some sickness in us. We have some sin. We have some past things that are holding us back we have things that we want to get free from here's what jesus is saying you come these nights guess what he's going to heal that sickness and we're going to see people that are oppressed by sin oppressed by depression oppressed by their circumstances or their past order. we're going to see come in and them come in and guess what jesus is going to set them free but it's all dependent now watch here's the key it's all dependent on how you view these next four nights here, Wednesday through Saturday. You see, you have to have the faith. You have to have the expectation, and you have to give these meanings the honor and value that God wants you to give them. Real quickly, go to Mark chapter 6, verse 3 through 6. Jesus is coming back to his hometown. He's ready to do some incredible works in his hometown, and they start kind of like, they're kind of shocked. Like, you're the miracle worker? You mean this is Jesus? I mean, we grew up with Jesus. Are you kidding me? This is the guy. Look at Mark 6, 3. It says, Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, except among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there not that he just wouldn't do it but he couldn't do it he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief so what was the difference between mark chapter one and mark chapter six Mark chapter 1, all these people show up, man. They're ready to get healed. They're ready to wake up in the wind. They're ready to get a breakthrough. They're excited about meeting with Jesus. He heals everybody. He sets everybody free. I mean, it's this unbelievable revival at sundown. But now he goes back to his own town. Now he comes in there, and they're like, man, what, is this Jesus? What, this is supposed to be the anointed one? Are you kidding me? This is like Mary's boy. I saw him run around his diapers back in here. And see, instead of them seeing Jesus as the Son of God, a prophet is without honor except in his own house. This is the house of God. They were too familiar. And instead of seeing Jesus as the Son of God, they just saw him as old Jesus. See, what you see is what you get. These revival nights, are you going to see, oh man, Jesus is showing up. Where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst of them. Man, he gave Pastor Stovall a prophetic word for this. Man, we can sense what God's doing. This is going to be absolutely unbelievable. If I show up, I'm going to get a breakthrough. I'm going to experience God at the next level. I'm going to have my own personal awakening. It's going to be incredible. Or are we going to see it? Oh, just another church meeting. I go to celebration all the time. See, what you perceive is what you will receive. God, that's good, Stovall. Could you say that again? Thank, thank you for asking me. Yes. What you perceive is what you will receive. How do you perceive? Jesus, do, are we going to honor these nights? You know, it was amazing. It was amazing. How many of you watched the State of the Union address a couple of weeks ago? President o Obama. State of the Union address. Okay, not too many of y'all. But listen, I'm not being political, but here's what I noticed. 
And I don't know why I haven't noticed this before because I've watched many State of the Unions. But did you notice like Obama would be saying something? Of course, we know there's all kind of division in Congress and all that kind of stuff. And, but Obama would be saying something. And then every now and then he'd just say something that kind of everybody agreed on, you know, like America's going to be great or, you know, whatever. J just kind of something like that. And all of a sudden he would say something like that and everybody, I mean all these senators and congressmen and everybody would rise to their feet and be like, yeah, yeah cl erupting, clapping. Presbyterians in that crowd. <laughs> Methodists in that crowd. Oh, I'm preaching now. Every, I mean, it's just a man speaking words that may be positive, but that have no eternal value. And they're honoring the office, standing up more than many of them would ever do in church. How much more Christ, Son of the living God, when His words come from the pulpit when he speaks to us his eternal word that's able to save our souls God said I've set my word above my name man doesn't live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God and people come into God's house and they'll just sit there like you better entertain me this weekend Stovall you better entertain me and it better be doctrinally right and scripturally right and all that. And you better make me laugh. And you better have all the songs around it that I like. And yet, you old Pharisee. You a bunch of bones, man. You need the breath of God blown in you. I mean, when I, when I you know, when I say awaken unto righteousness, look, we're going to have a practice right here. Guess what? We're going to have a practice right here. You ready? I'm about to say a scripture from the Word of God. It's not man's Word. It's God's Word. And I'm telling you right, I want this place to look way better than that State of the Union address because we're not just listening to a man. This is not about Republicans, Democrats, Obama, or anything else. You understand what I'm, I'm saying here? I'm talking about we need to get some honor for God's Word and some honor... For God's house. I'll just tell you this scripture. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. What? 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 Come on, man. Yes. You can be seated. Be seated. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What? What? Hallelujah. Come on, come on, Orange Park. Come on, St. John's. Come on, St. Augustine. Come on, ACHS. Yes, it's God's word. It's not man's word. Okay, you can be seated. Now stay seated. <laughs> stay seated because i gotta, got to get you guys out of here. Real quickly, three things I want you to have when you come this week. And I want you to come every night, and I want you to fast. Can you just give God four days? Can you just give Him four days? Give Him four days to change your life to ever. And come with this, hunger. And all this, how, th these three things have to do with how you value, how you're going to honor these meetings. Come with hunger. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst, thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Come with determination. Hunger, determination. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She showed up, but once she got there, man, she was determined to reach out and lay hold of her awakening. You come with determination. I'm getting a hold of God. I'm getting a miracle. I'm getting a breakthrough. I'm experiencing the presence of God like never before. And the last thing is, you come with expectation. You just come expecting God's going to do, remember, an exceedingly great armor. He's going to even exceed whatever I'm hoping for. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think 
or ask, and you are going to go out of here after these meetings, a mighty in that army, a mighty overcomer for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, can you give God a hand?